My name is Kyle. Being in the IBDP program has been quite an interesting experience, to say the least. On one hand, I've had the opportunity to go through some of the most amazing and life-changing moments that I've ever had. While on the other hand, I've had many different reasons to go to bed at one in the morning. As evidence, here's me sleeping in last year's TEDx event. But if there's one thing that I could say is the best thing about IB, it is the fact that I have the fortune to be with some of the most interesting and zealous people that I have ever met, both inside and outside of the classroom. I genuinely don't mean to be hyperbolic when I say that my classmates in cohort seven are some of the most talented and wonderful people that I have ever met. From the academically proficient, to the artistically talented, to the athletically gifted, each and every one of my classmates has something that really sets them apart from your average senior high school student. Now, that had me thinking about what my special talent was. You know, the sort of flair that people would immediately be able to recognize me by. But after thinking about it for a bit, I've come to the realization that compared to my peers, I'm honestly pretty average. My grades are normal. I don't usually sing nor dance too much. And I only play sports when my friends invite me to. Overall, I'm just a normal guy in a sea of abnormally talented people. Now, if somebody was to tell me this when I was younger, I would have been absolutely mortified. Because when you're at that age, you usually try your hardest to be unique and memorable so that you can establish some reputation with your colleagues. In this case, other prepubescents, but please take that as you will. But when I was a kid, being just a regular guy was my absolute worst fear, which was more than enough motivation for me to do my best to be something special. Looking back on it now though, now that I'm older and hopefully a bit wiser, I've come to learn that doing things in the pursuit of popularity is almost a surefire way of wasting your time doing something you don't enjoy. Because when you start defining success by other people's opinions, you begin to drown yourself into this sort of, I need to do this to get more popular sort of mentality. A mentality that got so bad for me, it even seeped into hobbies that I genuinely did have a passion for, which eventually led to me just abandoning them altogether. So today, I decided to make my talk about me taking a little trip down memory lane to look back at three key moments in my life in order to see how the desire to get more popular impacted me in the wrong way. And what I've learned from these experiences in the hopes that you all might be able to attain a more positive message from this that could hopefully keep you all passionate about your own interests. So, with all that being said, let me begin. The first sport that I officially joined was swimming. I was around seven or eight years old when I enrolled in the swimming program offered by Emilio Aguinaldo College held in their sports and cultural center. I was enrolled in it with my older sister and my two cousins one of them just a few months younger than me. This is important because one day, while we were still doing our basic drills, 
The swimming instructor assigned to us directed my younger cousin to go on to the next lane where the more advanced swimmers were exercising. Naturally, I had the assumption that that was my cue to also move on from the beginner's class. However, as I was paddling toward the next lane, the instructor stopped me and told me that I wasn't ready to go there yet. And this shocked me to my core. I still remember being so utterly confused by the fact that my younger cousin was better than me at swimming. It got to the point that while I was doing the exercises given to me, I kept on repeating the same questions over and over again in my head. Why is he better than me? Why am I even here? If my younger cousin is just that much better than me, then what was the point of some average Joe like me even being here in the first place? But eventually, I left the program to switch over to a different sport that I liked. Badminton. I mean, it was clearly a better choice. What's so special about splashing around in the water anyways? Don't mind that. Initially, I joined it just to have something to do on Thursdays and Sundays. And I was perfectly content with going to a court for two hours, hitting things with other things, and running around until I got tired and went home. It was just a casual hobby, and I was more than okay with that. But that all fell apart when one day, the organizer of the badminton program came to my parents with the offer of having me join the school's varsity badminton team. My family was trying really hard to convince me to join, as it was an opportunity to do something notable with my skills in badminton. And eventually, I caved in and agreed to join. But today, if I was given the opportunity to travel back in time to change my answer from a yes to a no, I'd do it in a heartbeat. The decision to join the varsity team was actually what led to me quitting badminton as a whole for a really long period of time. Because all of a sudden, something that I was participating in just for fun was now a responsibility that I had to commit to and had to get better at. And once again, the same question kept on repeating over and over again in my head every time I came in for practice. Why am I here? I'm not even having fun anymore. I'm just going because I'm required to do so. This sort of toxic mentality only festered as I grew up and got into more hobbies. And the process would always be the same. I develop an interest in something, get into it, either compare myself to other people or come to see it as more of an obligation than anything else, and eventually completely lose the initial passion I once had for the hobby. It was a very, very counterproductive cycle. It eventually led to me just outright dropping the idea of having any sort of activities outside of school. I just didn't have it in me anymore to pick anything up, as I firmly believed that no matter what I tried to invest my time in, I would either get outpassioned by another more skilled individual or just outright lose my passion as a whole. It wasn't until 2019, when I was around 14 years old, that I finally found an opportunity to break myself out of this negative loop. And it came with something I joined purely out of guilt. It was Saturday, the last day of exam week for the third quarter and I was more than ready to get on the school bus and head on back home. That was until my advisor asked if anyone from the class had the intent to join the tryouts 
for the Mr. and Miss Sports Fest competition, a beauty pageant that was held in conjunction with our Sports Fest. A few days earlier into the week, our advisor had picked out five boys and five girls from the class who he wanted to see go to the tryouts as representatives. And I was one of them. But I had it set in my mind that I was not at all interested in participating. Not one bit. But I just felt so sorry when I saw the look on my advisor's face. So sorry, in fact, that what initially started as nobody from the class joining evolved into just one person, myself. Because during the last few moments before the school buses departed, I called my mother to tell her that I was going to join and that she'd have to pick me up. She was not happy about that, I can tell you right now. But after the tryouts, I kind of felt relieved knowing that I was most likely not going to get in as I, one, really fumbled a lot when I was answering the questions given to me by the judges, two, wasn't even wearing the correct attire, and three, didn't feel that compared to the other candidates, I just wasn't conventionally attractive enough. So imagine my surprise when one day, as I was having class, our batch's advisor pulled me out and informed me, along with three other batchmates of mine, that we were going to represent our batch in the pageant. While the other three candidates were off celebrating amongst themselves, I had this sort of sinking feeling in my stomach, as if I got myself into something that I wasn't cut out for, something that I was way out of my depths for. And that same feeling persisted all throughout the journey. From the practices that I had to attend to get better at choreography and dancing, to the personal practices that I had scheduled to improve the way that I walked and my stage presence, to the photo shoots and interviews that I had to join because of promotion. And once again, that question was reverberating in my head. Why am I here? Why should I even bother trying? I'm competing against 11th and 12th graders, and I'm just in eighth grade. There's no way I'm gonna win. So why should I even try? And so, while I was complaining to my parents for the umpteenth time about having to attend practices, my mother had finally had enough of my whining and gave me some advice that has stuck with me ever since. And all she said was, you're already here and there's not much that we can do about it. So why not see it through all the way to the end? After hearing these words, I had an epiphany. My usual outlook being very negative and pessimistic had suddenly turned on its head to a more bright and optimistic outlook. My mom was right. I'd already invested so much time and effort into this event. So I owe it to not only myself, but to all of the people who supported me to see it through all the way to the end. And either way, I'd be getting something out of it. If I lost, I could say that I was a part of an amazing and outstanding event. And if I won, I'd not only be bringing pride to myself, but I'd be bringing pride to my batchmates, my family, my friends, everybody who had supported me all the way. 
and no matter what happened, I'd be getting a great story to tell at parties. And I carried that mentality all the way to when we reached the top two finalists of the event. I was kind of surprised, honestly, that I got there. But at the same time, I was happy with myself, knowing that I got here, knowing that all my hard work had paid off. I'd exceeded my expectations, and that was more than all right with me. When they announced that I was the winner of the men's category of the Mr. Sports Fest competition, a whole smorgasbord of emotions came flooding down on me all at once. Confusion, joy, astoundment, confusion again. But amongst all of that, this tiny little nagging voice came ringing in my head one more time. Why am I here? In the previous instances where this uh, question was ringing in my head, I gave some half-baked answers that kind of were just there as excuses. I'm here because I want to be better than them. I'm here because I have to get better. Or something more along the lines of, I'm here because I have to. I don't have any other choice. Just excuses to allow me to wallow in my own self-pity. But for once, I finally had an answer to this question of self-doubt and fear that I'd planted in my own head. So, with my head held high, both figuratively and literally, I answered, I'm here because I want to be. And that's all there is to it. The message that I come to you all with today is not one that's entirely original, nor is it one that's deeply profound. But it's one that I believe most people tend to forget when we're all caught up in the humdrum nature of the world that we live in. And that is, in anything and everything that we involve ourselves with, we have to make sure that we're doing it because we want to do it. Because I believe that that's the only time that we can truly say that we are passionate in something. We need to have that want in us before anything else. It's taken quite some time for me to learn this lesson. And even until now, I'm still struggling to incorporate this into everything that I invest myself into. But after having had this epiphany more than five years ago now, it's helped me see things so much better in my life. It's made me feel so much better about myself. I've also gotten so much better at choosing the things that I want to put myself through. And overall, it's made my life so much better. So, with all of that being said, I leave you all with this message. In life, when everything around you seems to be falling apart, when everyone seems to be against you, there's always one person that you can rely on to get yourself through all the way to the end. And that's yourself. You can either be your best friend or your worst enemy. And I don't know about you, but I am more than ready to have more best friends. Thank you all.